Yo guys, I'm here to show off my Blood Surge Overpower Necro build. Um, I'll put chapters down in the description, but first I just want to show off what this build plays like and looks like. So I'm just going to go through this Nightmare Dungeon. It's just a uh, 36, so all the mobs will be about 3 levels higher than me, not too high. This build does really well with mobs about 1 to like... Five levels higher if you go any higher than that I think probably gonna need more gear my gear is not optimized at all yet but yeah I'm just gonna go through show how it plays what you want to do and then after that I'll put in the description down below going through the build what you need um, the skill tree and like all the stats you want to find yeah the first thing you want to do is you've got this uh, 12 stacks Whenever you're at 12 stacks, you're next to the overpowers. You want to do a blood surge to get that on cooldown, and then you want to use a blood wave on absolutely nothing, because that ability sucks. But, it spawns three blood orbs as it travels. And that's the only reason we're taking that ultimate. Because blood orbs are our biggest source of getting fortify. There's a glyph we take where we get 7% of our max life every time we eat a blood orb. And, uh, the damage is kind of slow at the start of the dungeon. Not super slow, like, I'm still killing stuff, but... You can see my Fortify is only at 20% HP right now. And that's gonna fill up really quickly, like, every time... I'll just drop a Blood, a blood Wave whenever it's up. Preferably not when, uh... Rathma's Vigor is up, though. Because when that ability overpowers, it does, like, 30% or... Actually, it probably does like 15% of the damage that it would do if Blood Surge overpowered. It's pretty weak. It's even weaker than using your basic attack hemorrhage. So you don't really want to use Blood Wave when you have that. When you have that guaranteed overpower from our passive. You're going to want to one-shot some stuff with Blood Surge and then just toss it out. Go grab the Blood Orbs for more Fortify. And then we're also getting Blood Orbs from Corpse Tendrils. Because we have a 35% chance per target to get a blood orb whenever Corpse Tendrils hits. Oh, this, this probably isn't going to be that good of an event, but this build destroys in like the events where it's like Massacre or like... It's like whenever there's a ton of enemies, this build is like the best at that. Like it's better than Bone Spear in that regard. And uh, the reason for that is the over. So this blood surge overpowers four times whenever it overpowers, and two of those are a screen wide overpower. So like something can be over here and it'll still die. And we're getting guaranteed overpowers every 12 seconds from our passive and every five casts of blood surge. So that's why attack speed is. Really nice for this build. You're gonna keep your essence filling up quick from the uh, attack speed, and then also every five casts, you're gonna get an overpower that's gonna do most of your damage. Thank you, Wanderer. Without you, I'd be dead. I think I can manage from here. I think there's like a legendary power you can get where blood orbs give you essence. You could run that, but I don't think you need it because. Whenever you get a blood orb, your next hemorrhage actually becomes AoE. So, when it becomes AoE, you get like 10 essence for every target it hits. And yeah, you just get a ton of essence from that. I say 10, but it could be even more than that if you have like a lot of. Uh, Resource generation modifiers, which are good for this build. You don't really, you don't need crit at all, which is a weird thing for this build. Not ready but overpower scales completely separately from crit. So even if you get a crit on your overpower attack, it's not gonna multiply together. It's gonna, they're gonna like multiply separately and then add together. 
Same with vulnerable damage. That has no impact on this build. So one of the things that's like really fun about this build that I like is you don't have a lot of stats that you need to worry about. You just need to worry about max health, overpower damage, and uh, fortify generation. And then like you can get like attack speed, move speed. Move speed is really nice because it allows you to like get into a good position for your blood surges. It also allows you to grab your blood orbs more efficiently like mid fight. Let's say you like run out of essence and you see a blood orb somewhere and you need to grab it so your next um, hemorrhage is AoE so you can get your essence back. Or you just need to grab it for more fortified. It's, I mean, move speed's great in every build in this game. It's kind of a big thing in ARPGs. I need more time. Oh, also willpower is amazing. Because you get resource generation, healing received, and overpower damage. And those are all pretty much damage increases. The way this build plays. I'm not ready yet. Um, this build I don't think is close to as good as Bone Spear Necro, but. If you've played Bone Spear Necro, it's very likely that build gets nerfed. And then I think either this build or uh, possibly the Minion Necro build could end up being like the meta. Basically, when I overpower with Blood Surge, I'm hitting for about a million. It's, um, I think. If I'm not max fortify, it's about 200k to 220k. If I am max fortify, it's about 250k. And it would be even higher if these mobs were my level, but since they're higher level, it scales down a little bit. That's one thing that kind of... I don't know if it's intentional or not, but... Fortify doesn't seem... or uh, overpower doesn't seem to scale near as good as... Uh, crit damage modifiers do with higher level targets. Like if I do a dungeon where they're 10 levels higher, it seems like it really reduces my overpower damage for quite a bit. I'm not ready yet. This build is very tanky though. So that's one nice thing about it. boss right now. It's decent speed. I did level up in that dungeon, so the boss ended up only being two levels higher, but... Um, our biggest source of overpower damage is this glyph right here, Dominate. For every 5 willpower purchased within range, you gain 23.8% increased overpower damage. This thing, this glyph scales really crazy. I think it starts at like 4, I don't know if it's like 4% or 5 or 6%, but if we go to the uh, Paragon Tree, this thing is giving me so much overpower damage. Oh wait, where is it? Okay, here it is. Plus 256.6% overpower damage. But it's actually giving more than that. Pretty much everything that gives you overpower damage is going to give you way more than it says. Um, so first I want to explain how overpower damage works. And why, like, nothing scales with it. Overpower damage is... When you overpower, it's completely scaled only by your skill base damage. That's why it's really important to have plus to whatever skill you want to use as uh, the, your like overpower spender. So uh, Blood Surge, I think, is the best. I tried Blood Lance before this, 
and it wasn't near as good as Blood Surge. The reason for that is Blood Surge has two hits, but then you get a legendary that makes Blood Surge Nova Echo, and actually when it echoes, it says it deals 60% less damage, but the overpower doesn't do any less damage. It does full damage on the Echo, actually. So you'll get the uh, you'll get an overpower on the draw blood, but it's actually when it overpowers, it does the damage of both the 90% and 36% damage combined, plus your max health multiplied by your overpower damage. So it adds your it adds your max health and fortify damage together first, and then it takes your base damage, and then it multiplies all that times your overpower damage. And you might be wondering how my overpower damage is so high. Actually, I usually have an overpower damage elixir on, but I don't have one on right now. If I pop this potent crushing elixir, it goes up quite a bit, 1749. And the reason it went up by like 100% is because of um, the sacrifice. Your overpower damage is increased by 58% multiplicatively. So this is how we're getting like multipliers and is actually the sacrifice right here and then on the two-handed weapon you're gonna want to get the sacrifice bonuses are increased I only have it at 46% but if you can get this at 50 it's gonna be huge I just like for some reason I've had a really hard time finding the sacrifice bonuses one but yeah that's the most important legendary and uh anyways <clears throat> the uh let's just talk about the most important legendaries since we're already on this so you want to get sacrifice bonuses on two-hander on your neck you're going to want to get whenever your blood skills overpower you gain 75 percent attack speed for four seconds it's really important to have at least like 60 percent on this if you don't have 60% on this, what you could do is put on this ring. This ring, honestly, you can swap out for a lot of things. I was running critical strikes with core skills give increased attack speed. Um, and that one worked really well. I think this one, you get 60% overpower damage based on the uh, amount of health you heal over 100%. So right now it's at 120, you get 0.5% overpower damage per stack. And then it just only applies to your next overpower though, so you kind of have to like, if you really want to keep maxing it up, you got to either pop health potions or pick up more blood orbs or pop blood mist. Like there's a lot of ways to get it. This legendary is not that important though. I, I just started running this today and it's not really that noticeable. It's a little bit more damage, but I think you could easily go with um, either more resource or... Um, attack speed because that's what I've ran on it. I've tried a bunch of different ones. They all don't matter too much Also, this ring doesn't have the stats. I need it Does have maxed out roll on max life, which is great, but it doesn't have overpower damage um, And then I would say so weapon and this neck this neck also isn't perfect There's a passive called tides of blood that we really want to get plus ranks to because it's another multiplier for our overpower damage. So right now it's at 15x. And actually, if I go to my character sheet, my overpower damage is actually higher than this with blood skills. It says 1749. If I take a point out of this, it won't change. So this isn't shown in the tree. See, I took a point out, it's still 1749. Put it back in. Still 1749. So that's like a big thing is that my uh, overpower damage is actually like 15% higher than it says in the tree. So it's probably closer to about 2000%. Um, this ring here, Mother's Embrace, if you can get this, it is really nice. It's not needed, but it is really nice to have because it comes with overpower damage every time you get it. Uh, the all stats is kind of nice. Lucky hits, all right. Um, it's not that big. I think it would be better to have an overpower damage and max life ring here, but this ring is nice for the build for, like, clearing dungeons or, like, clearing events and leveling up. But it's not needed, but it is nice to use as, like, a 
spot holder for now. But eventually I want to get another max life overpowering here. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do we got? Oh, the Blood Surge Nova Echo is actually more important than these rings. I forgot to go over that. It does not matter how much less damage that second Nova is going to do in this build. Because the overpower damage is going to be the same on the second Nova anyways. So you can get a 70% less damage. I have a 60% less roll, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, you don't really need crit chance. So I need to replace that crit chance with overpower. And then this, these would be like perfect gloves. Um, aside from that, these are all like defensive ones, like the basic... Uh, for boots, I think this one is actually pretty important for this build. Becoming injured while crowd controlled grants you unstoppable for four seconds. The only way you really die in this build is when you get CC'd. Like CC chained while Blood Mist is on cooldown. You can use Blood Mist to get out of CC, but if it is on cooldown, then you could be screwed without these boots. And I think 40 second cooldown's fine. I would. You can get it lower, it's not gonna make that big of a difference because usually you're not getting CC chained more often than like over 20 seconds hopefully you kill them in that four second window you're unstoppable and then the next mobs you run into probably aren't gonna have CC like that and then uh everything else that I have here is pretty much like damage reduction on all these other pieces like basic seals grant 20% damage reduction uh, we have Obedience on the chest. This helm is just a placeholder right now. I don't know what defensive legendary I want to put on this. Right now I just have the damage in Elite grants a barrier. I just have this from the Codex. So it's like the weakest roll possible. But that's definitely not needed. Um, and then I have a little notepad with priority for like gearing up what you want to focus on the first thing you want to get is plus four ranks to blood surge on gloves if you get a drop and it has plus three when you upgrade it'll go plus four if it drops and it has plus two it'll upgrade to plus three but i would uh definitely get plus four ranks to blood surge and honestly i wouldn't even like start i wouldn't try to do the overpower ver version of this build unless you already have your Paragon board up to a point where that you can get the um, Dominate Glyph because this is by far our biggest source of overpower damage. Like this Glyph carries this build hard. So I would wait till you're like probably level 60-ish before you try this build. But the, the higher level I think this build gets better. Um. Yeah, so you want to start max life. You can get this on ring, helm, chest, legs. I don't have this on a lot of my pieces. Um, my helm's got a max roll. My chest doesn't have it at all. I'm trying to re-roll that total armor to max life because I already have enough armor. Um, my legs have a max roll. And then I have max roll on one ring, but I don't have any on Mother's Embrace. I need to replace this eventually. And then I'll probably put, like, the Critical Strikes Increase Attack Speed on it. And then... Oh, actually, um, another Legendary you can do... I might do this instead of the Attack Speed is... There's a Legendary that makes Blood Wave shoot two more Blood Waves out. So you'll get... And it does less damage on the Blood Waves, but we're not using it for damage anyways. But this actually makes it a lot better when you accidentally use Blood Wave when your overpower is up, because all three of them are going to overpower for the same damage. And also what it does... So Blood Wave leaves behind three Blood Orbs as it travels. When you have that Legendary, you get nine Blood Orbs every time you use Blood Wave. It's amazing for that. I tried it out last night, and then I switched to this to try it out. Just to see. And I think the... I think the triple blood wave is actually a little bit better than this, so that's something you could do. 
Um, overpower damage, you can get this gloves, two-handed weapon, and ring. I don't have this on my gloves or two-handed weapon, so that's a big damage multiplier that I'm missing there. <clears throat> uh, the Tides of Blood passive on necklace is huge. I don't have that yet either. That's another way this build can be improved. I'm just... I'm still working on this build, so this isn't like its final form. If I do get it to its final form, I'll post a video. But this build's really fun. I highly recommend it if you're like tired of bone or whatever build you're playing. I'd say this is like the funnest build I've played. It's uh, amazing in health odds as well. You can solo any event very quickly because of how Blood Surge overpowers everything on the screen with those that first hit and it does it twice. And then it has the Nova twice as well. Um, after your max life and overpower damage, you're going to want to go for Fortify Generation. Uh, this comes on Boots, Rings, and Chest. However, I would only focus on this on Boots and Rings. Because on Chest, there's so many good damage reductions you can get. I would focus on Chest in this order. I would go um, Max Life. And then you would want to go damage reduction from close, damage reduction from fortified, and then after that you could go just pure damage reduction I would say. And if you can't get that, you could go damage reduction from distant or or just total armor. I would say those are, that's probably the order I would go in. Unfortunately I haven't been able to replace my total armor with max life yet, but hopefully I can soon. This chest piece is really nice, the 20% damage reduction while fortified is insane. And by the way, this priority is purely for damage increases. This is not like the defensive. I'm just talking about how you're going to kill stuff. After Fortify Generation, you're going to want to go Attack Speed and Movement Speed. Movement Speed increase your damage by allowing you to get your Blood Orbs quicker and also just get around and get in better positions. Attack Speed is going to increase your damage because... You're only getting the overpower guarantee on Blood Surge every 5 casts. Aside from that, it's only a 3% chance to overpower. And then <clears throat> the 12 second passive we have also gives us guaranteed overpowers, but there's nothing you can do to increase how fast that does. That goes. Um, intellect and Willpower are really good as well, because Intellect increases your like base damage for your skills. So, um... Let's say these boots here, they have 50 intelligence. You can see the base damage for the um, draw blood from enemies dealing 3,856 to 4,712 damage. If I take these boots off, it goes down to 3,746. So we lose 110 base damage just on that first part from taking off, from losing 50 intelligence. And then also willpower is great because it increases overpower damage, but also increases your resource generation and, and improves healing received. You do get a lot of healing from this build, and if you're running this ring, and, um, any extra healing you get is just going to increase your overpower damage even more. So that's really nice. <clears throat> and then I would say after that, you can go resource generation and resource cost reductions. I think these are... I think these only come on rings, as far as I know. I was actually looking at a... Uh, where is it? Uh, there's a website here. that has like all the possible affixes. You can go to whatever class you're playing and look, and it'll tell you what affix you can get on that class. And yeah. For rings, you want to avoid all crit, get resource generation, max life, overpower damage and then fortify generation if possible that would be like the four best stats that you could get um, but yeah that's pretty much it for the damage optimization uh, I'll show you guys the skill tree now We max out hemorrhage because sometimes you're going to run out of essence and it's really nice having this. This actually will kill enemies with how fast it attacks. Um, you get 
AoE whenever you pick up a Blood Orb here, and then we're taking the 20% attack speed while healthy. Um, the reason we're taking this over Initiate's Hemorrhage, I tested this out for a bit. You get 1.6% base life as Fortify each time it hits, which sounds good because, you know, you want a lot of Fortify. But, and then it has a 1.5% chance per enemy hit to Fortify you for 100% base life. So 971. Basically, it's a 1.5% chance per enemy hit to fortify you for less than 10% of your health. So it's pretty bad. And the 20% attack speed, Hemorrhage already has a 20% chance to create a Blood Orb every time. And if we create a Blood Orb, then... Oh, this is a good time to bring up the uh, other glyph that's really important. Because this glyph... There's two glyphs that are insanely important, and this is the other one. Blood orbs fortify you for 7% of your max life, 886. And this is going to scale with your fortify generation, so... It's probably about, like... Oh, let's see. I don't think my fortify generation's too high yet. I'm still working on that. Oh, where is it? Defensive... Oh, I guess it's called Fortify Bonus. I only have 13%, so it's probably giving me closer to 8% per Blood Orb. But, uh, yeah, that's really big. And that's that's why I'm taking the attack speed over that, is because I want more Blood Orbs. I don't really care about how much Fortify Hemorrhage is giving me on its own, because our max life is so much higher than our base life. Um, and then down here... Max out Blood Surge, Enhance Blood Surge, and then you want to get the Overpower Blood Surge. Um, I haven't worked on this one yet. There is like a... You would take Supernatural Blood Surge if you were doing a Blood Surge build that wasn't about Overpower, but this one is all about Overpower, so... That's why we're running that. Um, I have two points in Unliving Energy. It's not that important. Max out Hued Flesh. Uh, this is just... There's a Paragon Legendary we get where we get damage reduction for corpses nearby, and also it allows us to get corpse tendrils. So that's great. Um, I max out Blood Mist. Blood Mist actually does some damage if you use it with the uh, guaranteed overpower. It ticks quite a bit. I think it ticks about five or six times. And if I do it when it's overpowered, it'll tick for about 70k each. So it's nothing crazy, but it will kill like little trash mobs and stuff. Um, we get Fortify. It's a very small amount of Fortify, but it is there. Ghastly Blood Mist, uh, I don't think we need it since we have Hued Flesh, but if you wanted to run that talent where you get like Fortify from corpses, I don't run it because you only get it from like this ability and Decompose and Reap. Is, is I think that's the only ways you can get Fortify from Necrotic Carpus down here. So that's why I'm not running that. But yeah, Max Out Blood Mist is going to heal you more. It's going to shorten the cooldown. And that's going to be your lifesaver for this build. Pretty much all Necro builds, it's your lifesaver. Max Out Death's Embrace. You don't have to Max Out Death's Reach. Because it's not going to affect your Fortify damage, but I do anyways. Um, you're going to want to Max Out all of these blood passives right here this one gives you more fortify every time you hit with blood skills you have a 25 percent chance on lucky hit to fortify for eight percent this gives you quite a bit with all the blood damage you're doing with blood surge and the echoes you gotta you basically have four 25 percent chance hits i mean the lucky hit chance on this is only 13 but when you're hitting like 10 to 20 targets on your screen you get some chances in there and you get some fortify. Um, gruesome mending is really important. This Qualis blood's not that important, but I'm just running it because why not? Tides of blood is the most important passive here. I would say tides of blood and drain vitality are the most important, but tides of blood by far is the most important. If you get a necklace with this, then your overpower is going to scale way better than mine because I haven't gotten one yet. Uh, gruesome mending is really nice because this will. If you're below 50% health and you pick up a Blood Orb, it's going to top you off. 
pretty much. Um, if you pop a potion, it's going to top you off. And then we have one point corpse tendrils, and we're doing the uh, blood orbs, because we get no damage increases on overpower from vulnerable. We're just taking blood wave for these three blood orbs, and then you max out the damage reduction for no minions, and then you max out these sacrifice bonuses. Obviously take Rathma's Vigor. I have one point in Inspiring Leader just for the attack speed bonus. Uh, this is pretty nice. I could actually probably take out these two points from the distant enemy's damage increase and put them in there. So now I have 12% increased attack speed while healthy. And then for the sacrifices, we're sacrificing the defenders for the 22% non-physical resistance. Although this sacrifice isn't that big of a deal. None of these other sacrifices are good for us. 22% shadow damage, and this one is 7% crit chance. We don't need crit at all, so this is the best we can take here. Theoretically, if you wanted, you could take some warriors. We have an open slot in this build, so if you want some defender warriors, and you want to like maybe get some thorns on them, or just get some beefy defenders, you can. I just prefer to have the sacrifice bonuses, personally. Um, for the golem sacrifice, we're taking the max life increase. Crit damage doesn't affect our overpower damage. The attack speed could be good if you wanted to take that instead, but... I like having the potential to one-shot with the uh, max life increase over the attack speed. And then... The mage sacrifice is 58% overpower damage, and then you can get that even higher if you get a better sacrifice bonus on your two-hander than I do. And then for the paragon board, I've got blood drinker in my first slot, which is the one where you can get your uh, for blood orbs fortify you for 7% of your max life. That's really important. And I haven't upgraded this um, I think it's only, yeah, my blood drinker is only level 5, so I don't even have the radius increase. So you'll be able to get this even without increasing the radius on it, so that's really nice. You can just, just get uh, all the intelligence nodes I have here and you'll be chilling. Um, then we go up here. For the first board, I chose the uh, blood orbs grant 5% increased damage. Um, this isn't too big of a deal, the Legendary Node. I could probably actually go out of this, because I don't think it affects my overpower damage at all. So, but you do want to come over here and get this overpower damage node on the left. You don't want these. These are pretty worthless over here. They're not increasing max health or overpower damage, it's just potion healing. Um, then up here... These magic nodes aren't too important, but you do have to come through here anyways to get up here to this glyph socket. And then this glyph socket is where you're going to put in your dominate node. And that's why, that, this is like the main reason I chose Blood Begets Blood is because there is so much willpower you get in this area. I have 54 out of 25 willpower in this glyph area. So there's 7 here, 7 here, and then there's two more, two fives, another 5. Five, like there's just a bunch of willpower in this area and then you can come over here and grab these overpower damage increases those are big um, but yeah aside from that nothing too crazy up here and then I came up here and then you want to get the uh, attacks that are guaranteed to overpower deal 50% increased overpower damage so this to get up here, you do kind of need a lot of Paragon points, so maybe uh, if you are running this build at a lower level, you might even want to pick this first. Uh, I don't know, actually. I would just wait till you're like level 70 probably so you can get up here, because it's like really important to get this legendary node, and if I were doing this, I would actually not even worry about this legendary node. I, I don't think you need that at all. And just focus on getting up here to that legendary node. And then get the uh, fortify generation down here. Get that. And then come over here, you get some more overpower damage. 
Then go up there. Make sure you get that legendary node though first, because that's an extra 50% multiplier on the guaranteed overpowers, which are going to be most of them, since it's only a 3% chance outside of those. Then you come up here, get more max life, plus damage while fortified doesn't matter, but the max life is nice. Actually, take some... Finding a lot of, like, free spots in my Paragon tree that I don't need. Like, what is this dexterity doing here? I just have no idea. And currently, I'm up here, I have the, uh, Imbiber is my third glyph socket. So, the... Every 5 wool power you get 3% increased damage while healthy, I don't really care about that. The 30% increased potion healing is really nice, though. Because then you get that 30% and then you have the other passive that we picked where you get 30% more healing below 50% health. So you pop a potion below 50% health, you're probably going to be chilling if you have decent gear. And then after this... Wait, actually I don't need these forgot there's like a spot that I was like really close down here but anyways I'll deal with this later that's uh pretty much it for this build though that's all I'm doing um once I get this like more optimized like I still need overpower on gloves overpower on weapon and uh max life and overpower on this ring and this ring doesn't have overpower either so there's a lot of growing to do and even with all that growing to do, the overpower damage is already at 1749, and that's not including the uh, multiplier from this legendary node down here, Bloodbath, and it's also not including the multiplier, the 15% multiplier from Tides of Blood, so Blood Necker has a lot of multipliers for overpower, it's really nice. But yeah. Hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything I missed, let me know. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. And uh, yeah, peace y'all. I'll post another video once I get this more optimized and let you know how it does once I get like the rest of the overpower increases and max life increases because I think this has potential. But once I get all that stuff and try it out, if it like can't push really high, then I'm probably going to try out the other Blood Surge build and see if that's any good and make a build on that. And I'm not doing that freaking nin the minion Blood Surge build where they're really doing like a corpse explosion build. I'm doing like a full Blood Surge build just like this. So, alright, peace y'all. Have a good one.